your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter number 10. Luke, chapter number 10. Verse number 17, the Bible says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, what I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. All over to the book of Revelation, chapter number 12. Or 12. Verse number 7. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Amen. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Amen. I want us to realize something this morning, and this is that the devil, he has a deadline. The devil has a deadline. If we're not careful this morning, we can get discouraged by the events of what's going on around us in the world. And sometimes we can get discouraged with life itself because the enemy is a liar and a deceiver. Uh, the book of Galatians tells us this, uh, Galatians 3.29, And if it be uh, Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Isaiah 14.12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? John 12 uh, says, uh, Now is the judgment of the world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Amen. Uh, the enemy is real this morning. I want you to know that. But he has a deadline. There's coming a day when, when, when his, his, his final trick is going to be put to rest. God is going to say enough is enough. He and his, his, his minions are going to be cast uh, into a, a pit that is a bottomless pit. There's coming a day where there's not going to be any more temptation. There's not going to be any more sin. Uh, there's not going to be any more lies that are whispered in our ear. The devil has a deadline. He knows his deadline is soon. And, and that is why he is working overtime. I don't know how you all are, but, uh, you know, we just went from the Kids Crusade uh, to youth camp, and, and uh, we were busy on Monday night at church Tuesday night. When I got home from church Tuesday night, man, I knew that I had a deadline. I was racing to get everything packed together and in the vehicle. It's amazing how much you can get done in a little bit of time when you know you only have that little bit of time. And if you like that... Not that we push it to the last minute, but it seems like when we know we have a deadline, we're really pushed and we really get a lot done. I need to tell you that the devil knows that his deadline is soon at hand and he is pushing and working overtime harder than he ever has before to discourage the people of God and to try to get all of those who he can because his deadline is short. Amen. It is. In fact... George Barba, 
uh, uh, polled, and he said in his research that only 40% of Americans believe that Satan is a living being. Only 40% of Americans believe that he is a living being. In the Catholic Church, only 69% believe uh, that, that, that he is a, 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 a living being. And I hate to say it, but in the Protestant Church, only 65% believe that Satan Lucifer is a living being. Whether or not the world believes, or whether or not all the church believes, the Word of God has written the standard. And from the very beginning, the enemy has tried to deceive. When we look at the Word of God, we find that the Word of God says it's Satan or Lucifer. He is an actual person. Amen. When we look at the Word of God, we find that from the very beginning of time, amen, there has been a conflict between God and Satan. Between good and evil. Isn't it amazing how the world loves to entertain themselves with that yeah. thought, but they don't like to buy into, uh, they don't like to, to allow their mind to be opened by the Word of God. Do you ever uh, look, uh, go, go to have a Walmart and you see that there are superheroes. Now, there is Batman, there is uh, Robin, his counterpart, there is Superman, and, and uh, there is, you know, whatever, I, I'm not up to date, all right? Uh, but I'm just saying, and there are those who are constantly warring against evil, but yet we don't want to realize that that is what is going on all around us, that good and evil is at war. Amen. That we have a holy God. Amen. And that there is an enemy who is perverse, who is trying to destroy the holiness of God and trying to keep God's people from seeing His holiness. He's trying to keep souls of human beings from coming in contact with a living God. God, that will bring life unto their dead, dead soul. Amen. The enemy's real. Well, let me just throw this in here. I didn't intend to say this this morning. Uh, but it's, it was interesting to me. I was talking to someone and they had a Marvel shirt on. The Marvel is someone who does superhero movies or something. Uh, once again, I'm not completely all up to date on all that stuff. Uh, but they told me, they said, I love Marvel. I, I, love, I love the way that Marvel does all these superheroes. Because you look at these superheroes and you see that there was really a dark side of them. There was a bad side of them. And now they have to overcome it with good and good deeds. I said, well, hey, that sounds like what God wants to do in the lives of men. We're Amen. And God desires to set free and liberate. And when we've been set free by the power of Jesus Christ, there is something inside of us that we've got to go about doing good. Amen. God plants good works in us and we've got to do them. Amen. There is an enemy who is out to destroy. And so ever since the beginning, we see that that enemy has been there. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 12, we find that there's going to be an ultimate conflict between good and evil. Amen. It's going to be in the end times. Amen. There is going to be a humiliation of Satan. That dragon is going to be cast down out of heaven. Uh, one third of his angels uh, uh, was, uh, has been cast down. And, and so the book of Revelation refers to that. Amen. It refers to the man child being born there uh, by the woman. And, and, and that uh, uh, it was, uh, they were persecuted by this dragon. There's coming a day where an evil is going to happen. Evil is going to have an ultimate end. We look at the Word of God. We try to live holy lives that are sanctified by the power of God. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. But I'm here to tell you that the devil's timeline is at hand. The devil's timeline is at hand. For the saints of God, that's encouraging. Amen. No more temptation. No more trials, no more tests, no more uh, the enemy coming against you to discourage you. But for those who don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, I'm going to tell you that's a very sad and scary day for them. 
Make us those whose names were not found written in the Lamb's book of life were cast into the lake of fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. God's design was never for humanity to die and go to hell. God's design has always been that hell has been prepared for the devil and his remnant. But there's coming a day when evil will have an end. We look in the Word of God and we find that back in the very beginning that there was conflict between good and evil in the Garden of Eden. And here it was that the devil was waiting to rear up his ugly head because he wanted revenge on God. God had cast him and one third of the angels down. And so he's coming back in revenge. Amen. In the Garden of Eden. But David, you said, well, we were made in the image of God. Amen. We like appreciation. We like, uh, we like that being loved. Amen. God likes that. God designed for us to be born as holy individuals. Amen. You look at Adam and Eve. Brother Josh, they didn't know sin. They didn't know pain. They didn't know heartache. They didn't know what it was like to cry. They didn't know what it was like to walk uh, uh, out through the the meadow and ain't get a thorn in the foot. They didn't know what it was like to see animals fighting and killing one another. They didn't know what it was like to see trees die. They didn't know what it was like to see a dead leaf on a plant. Imagine that if you would. They didn't know what it was like to see something uh, fade away. Uh, they lived at the way that God had created them. God had created them to live in a paradise that was pure and that was righteous and that was forever. But all of a sudden the enemy came by and he began to see because he wanted of revenge on God. And you know who he took it out on us? Out on, he took it out on mankind. All of a sudden, he slithers his way into the Garden of Eden and he begins to talk to the woman and he begins to connive with her. Hey, if you eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll become as God. He's a liar. He's always been a liar. He still lies even to this day. He tells you, hey, if you do what feels right, amen, it will bless you. You can be your own boss. You can be your own God. You can be your own man or your own woman, your own person. But it is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. Amen. We can legalize whatever we want in America. But if it's sin, it'll still be sin before God's eyes. Man can say it's okay. The enemy can get in there and deceive and corrupt. Amen. But when God says, let righteous be righteous, amen, we better choose to be on God's side. So the enemy is wreaking havoc. Amen. He is, he is wreaking havoc upon mankind. So here it is. He was successful in leading Adam and Eve into sin. Uh, but God, even in the middle of that, began to do something. I like what Genesis 3.15 says. It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, uh, and it shall bruise his heel. God was saying this. He was saying, I'm making a redemptive plan. I'm going to send my son Jesus Christ. The first prophetic uh, uh, glimpse of seeing God giving his son Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to rage war on the enemy because your soul is valuable. Now I want you to think about something this morning. The devil, when he was cast down out of heaven, he wasn't given a chance to repent. Amen. He, he wasn't designed as we as, as human beings are designed. Uh, we are designed with that trunk of our nature that is like God. The angels uh, that are there in heaven, amen, are, are completely a different, separate set than humanity. And so here it is. Uh, that, that God says, I love mankind. I've created them after my own image. I, I'm going to make a redemptive plan for them. So it begins to start to reach out to mankind. And all oh, the enemy hates that. The devil hates salvation. The devil hates redemption. The devil hates that God makes a sacrificial way for his people. And so the enemy uh, begins to get even more and more angry. Amen. He is fervently angry against God, against the people of God. Amen. And he says, I'm going to do whatever I can do to get back at God at any cost. So he begins to fight against mankind even harder. I want to tell you something. If you've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you're trying to live a Christian life, I want to tell you, you have a big target on your back. 
There's a big bullseye on you that the enemy is out to discourage you. He's out to trip you up. He's out to do whatever he can do to take you down. Amen. He's going to try to distract you from a prayer life. He's going to try to discourage you with the things of life. Amen. He's going to try to tell you that the place where God has put you is an evil place. That God's forgotten about you. He doesn't care about you. He's going to try to tell you that God doesn't hear your prayer. And when he delays the answer from coming. Amen. He's going to tell you God isn't concerned about you and your prayer. He's going to try to discourage you with everything that's within him. Oh, that's something. There's time on There's no one We know that from looking at the word of God. But he also knows it. And so here it is. Amen. How do you want to take her out? Just basically help, help us out with Brinkley. Amen. We, we have our sleep schedules all messed up the past couple weeks. Amen. So here it was that the enemy, God had given Adam and Eve some sons. Cain and Abel. The Bible says that Cain's heart was full of hatred toward his brother. And so he destroys his brother. But you know what? God had another plan. God gave another son, Seth. We find that mankind had fell into wickedness. Amen. And God said, I'm going to destroy all the world with a flood. Amen. But God raised up another man named Noah who made it through the flood. I want to tell you that God always makes a way. The enemy tries to destroy, but God always has a way of escape. Here it was that men's hearts was full of, uh, uh, of false religion and adultery. Amen. They were worshiping the gods of nature. But all of a sudden, God began to speak to a man named Abraham and said, Abraham, I have a better way for you. I know all your family builds idols and worships them, but I want to call you out. Amen. To a land. I'm going to take you and I'm going to show you. I want to be your God and I want to lead you and guide you and direct you. Amen. In the middle of a wicked world, I want you to know something. God is still calling men and women up to righteousness, to put false gods behind. Amen. To put idols behind. Amen. To put the things of the world behind. God is still leading men and women today. No matter how great the lies of the enemy. It's interesting that God had caused such hatred in Pharaoh's heart. He told him to destroy every male child, Hebrew boy. And so here it was that God had another plan. Amen. God took uh, that little boy named Moses and had him put in the river. Amen. When the enemy raises up his ugly head, he creates lies. God always has a plan. Amen. God always has a plan. The enemy's time is limited. It's interesting. And that here it is that the enemy tries to create within the nation of Israel just a lust that is before a golden calf. All kinds of immorality happen. But God raised up the sons of Levi in righteousness. I know that we're living in the last day. And the enemy knows his time is so limited. There is immorality running rampant. But I'm going to tell you, don't let the devil lie to you. God's still raising up sons of Levi. Amen. Who live righteously. Who live purely. Amen. Don't let the enemy discourage you. Amen. He tried to bind Samson. He bound him, Samson finds himself alive. He's grinding in a mill. But I'm going to tell you something. God heard the prayer of a man in his weakest moment. And God raised him up and did more in that last moment of his life than Samson had did in his entire life. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy will try to discourage you. And maybe you made some mistakes. Amen. Maybe you slipped a little bit. But I'm going to tell you that in your weakest moment, I believe God still hears your prayer. Amen. But the enemy will want to tell you that this is the end, that it is over, that there is nothing that God can do for you. That is the lie of the enemy. Amen. And there is a timeline that God has for the enemy. And it is up. Let God begin a breakthrough in your life and hear the prayer that you pray in your weakest hour. Amen. Here it was. King Saul was raised up with pride and sinfulness. 
But God raised up a man after his own heart in David. Amen. God is faithful. Here it was. Amen. Satan, he tried to destroy even Jesus Christ. Jesus was on a boat sailing one day, and all of a sudden, the enemy saw that he was asleep in that boat. He said, I'll just brew up a storm right here on the seas. Amen. And begin to blow the wind and the waves. Amen. Trying to destroy even Jesus Christ and his disciples. But you know what? When God got and spoke and said, Peace, be still. Amen. Amen. The enemy loves to blow up storms in our life. I said the enemy loves to blow up storms in our life. Amen. He loves to fight against God's people. He loves to discourage. Amen. He will try to kill you spiritually if he can. But I want to tell you, God still comes by with his almighty power and he speaks. He has a way of calming the winds and the seas. Amen. He has a way of putting the enemy to flight. Amen. Here it was, the chief priest and, and the Pharisees. He began to orchestrate hatred in their heart against Jesus Christ. As he began to orchestrate that hatred in, in their hearts against Jesus Christ, uh, they had Jesus uh, tried unfairly and unjustly. Uh, they saw him hang on the cross and be crucified. Amen. But that was not the end of the story because the resurrection, it ruined the plans of the enemy. God still loves to ruin the plans of the enemy for your and my life. Amen. I still believe God still loves to ruin the plans of the enemy for America. I believe God loves to ruin the plans of the enemy for America Revival Church. Amen. I believe God still loves to ruin the plans of the enemy for the saints of God right here this morning. You know, the enemy can lie against you. He can create havoc in your home. He can create havoc in your family. Amen. He did in Eli's day. Amen. Eli, his family, there was so much havoc. But God still raised up a man named Samuel. He still spoke to him. Amen. God is still speaking in the hour in which we live, even when there's lots of havoc in families. Amen. God is still working. God is still working. It's interesting that in the Old Testament, you don't see any demon possession, but you come into the New Testament and you see that there are those that are presented throughout the Word of God who was possessed by demons. Why is that? Because God had a physical covenant with His people in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, He has a spiritual covenant with them. And so when we're in the spiritual covenant with God, there is an enemy that will fight against our soul. There are times you may feel sick in your body. It may not be the flu that's running rampant. It may be the enemy trying to discourage you. Sometimes the toughest morning can be Sunday morning. You can work all week long. You can get up, you can go to work. But man, Sunday morning you get up, everything goes wrong. You know, you're not feeling good. Maybe the alarm clock doesn't go off. Uh, the breakfast is burned. Uh, havoc is going on. Uh, you know, uh, just craziness. You know why? Because it's a spiritual battle that we're facing. The enemy knows that when you come to church, God's about to break through in your life and do something. Some of you in here, I want to tell you something. God has uh, uh, something great for you, but the enemy has you so bound with so many lies and deception. Brother David, you said, well, this morning, what happens if I lift my hands? What happens if I cry? What happens if I pray? Amen. I oh, look foolish. That's a lie of the enemy. Because the truth is, when you begin to worship God, when you begin to surrender areas of your life to God that you've never surrendered before, God has great things for you. But the enemy wants to keep you bound. What will others do? What will my friends think? What will my family think? Oh, what will I have to do? Well, I have to give up that. How will I ever make it? And you know, those are the things that you need to trust God for. Amen. God will never bring you to something that He will not take you through. Amen. God will not withhold any good or perfect thing from you. God is a heavenly Father who loves us and when we enter into this covenant relationship with Him that is spiritual. Amen. God will bless you. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Amen. God has great things for you. So here it is if we look at the spiritual battle. I want to tell you something. You may not think about this, but the Word of God tells us several things about the devil. That he has a synagogue in the book of Revelation 2.9. He has a seat in the church in which to work. Revelation 2.9. I want to tell you something. That the enemy comes in his services. 
to discourage and destroy. It can distract you. You can get your mind thinking about all kinds of things. What are we going to have for lunch? I'm tired. Pastor, will you get the message done? I, I just want to go home and rest. But it's for them. I, I don't feel like praying this morning. The enemy comes right in whatever he can get you to do. But you don't get what God wants. But I'm going to tell you, God has something for every individual in the sanctuary. On the other side of our face. He is the devil's a liar and the deceiver. He is a robber. Jesus said this, the enemy come not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I am come that they might have a life and life more abundantly. The enemy will try to take anything he can away from you before God gives it to you. You may say, but well, well, I don't think being a Christian is really living. I'm going to tell you, you've never experienced being a Christian then. Because it's just the beginning of living. Amen. It's just the beginning of eternal living. Amen. Your mind cannot even imagine what God has in store for you. The enemy, the book of Revelation 12, 9 says he destroyed he deceives the whole world. He uses sinners to prophesy. He'll even use sinners to do wonderful works. He has his own doctrine. He has his own prophets. He has his own false Christ. Amen. He, he's, he's the controller of evil men. He disguises himself even as an angel of light. The enemy is wicked this morning. But he has a deadline. He has a deadline. Son of God, if you've been battling the enemy this morning, I want to tell you to keep on fighting. Because the enemy has a death line. Daniel prayed, and where's the answer? Three weeks. Where is the answer? The enemy is holding it up. Your answer may be on the way, but the enemy doesn't want you to hear it. So don't get discouraged. Satan, he has many tactics. The Word of God tells us in the book of Revelation that he accuses. He is an accuser. I'll say something. He will accuse you of things that you've not even done. The mind is a battlefield this morning. It is a battlefield. And if the enemy can get an inlet in there, he will put all kinds of crazy thoughts in your mind. I know that I say this a lot, but I say this because I want you to be liberated. If you are a child of God, you're not the person that you were when you walked according to the flesh. The Word of God says, but now you walk, work according to the Spirit and not after the flesh to, to fulfill the lust thereof. If you're walking after the Spirit, who you used to be is not who you are. Don't allow Him to accuse you. He will tell you that you can't make it. He'll tell you that you're a failure. He'll tell you that this thing is fraudulent. Amen. He'll do whatever He can do to discourage you. He is an accuser. The Word of God says that He condemns. He is the one that condemns. He is the one who devours. He is the one who imprisons. He loves to keep people behind bars that he thinks that are immovable. But with God, he can move the mountain. He can move the bars. He can move the barriers. Amen. God is able. He likes to take advantage of individuals. He loves to steal away from the world. Satan, he is a powerful influence this morning. He is a, a vicious opponent. Amen. His labors are crippling to the church. His labors are crippling to you and I. Amen. And he would like to take and give us an eternal sentence that will doom us to hell. But I'm going to tell you something. God delivers from hell this morning. God delivers from sin. Amen. God changes lives. Amen. If we will allow Him to. Mm -hmm. Notice that Satan tried to tie Jesus but the victory was won in Calvary. He loves to come against. But the Word of God says that we are overcomers this way by the blood of the Lamb and the Lord of our testimony. This song Song of Camp was great. Part of it says, anyone here ever found them faithful? Say amen. Anyone ever been through the fire or the flood? Say amen. 
How many has ever been through the mountain or the valley when God's been faithful? Say amen. Hey, man, I want to tell you something. That when we have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our life, and we begin to testify, we are overcomers this morning. I'm going to give everyone here a warning. If you find yourself not wanting to be in church and the people of God, it's the enemy. It's the enemy. Brother Phil, I can't make it to church. I have too much going. Brother Phil, excuse after excuse after excuse. I've heard them all. I've pastored long enough.